Hey everybody, welcome into Delmarva Sports Insider. I am Brandon Bossert. We have a jam-packed show for you tonight. Hope everyone is enjoying the beginning of their Easter weekend. Well, let's get right into the show. We have more spring football to talk about this week. We're leading off with two city rivals, Parkside, looking for revenge this week. Just three weeks ago, Y High won their first matchup in eight years against rival Parkside in dominating fashion. Well, last night, the rematch, and what a game this was. Scoreless after one, second quarter, Tribe sophomore Darius Foreman gets the edge, and like a stretch Armstrong, reaches over the line for six. 30 seconds left in the half now. Parkside trying to tie this up. Gibrante Mills carries it in for the score. But not so fast. We've got laundry on the field, folks. Play called back due to holding. Very next play, third and goal from the 32. Mills back, throws it up. Travis Waters is there, and he just wanted that ball more. Gets it in for the score. What a play by number 24. We'd be tied at seven with just minutes to play. Final minute now in regulation. Foreman calls his own number, and he is gone. 56 yards to the house. But wait a second. Once again, a yellow handkerchief out on the field. Holding call, Why high forced to punt. Two plays and a late hit later puts Parkside in the red zone. 11 seconds left, and Mills takes the direct snap into the end zone. Mills in for the go-ahead score. Why high won this matchup 40-12 to just three weeks ago. The last night, Parkside wins it 14-7. to Here's Mills and coach Brendan Riley after this insane win. They beat us bad first. I couldn't let that happen again. No, I didn't play that game. My team played hard. They team played hard to the last minute. I'm glad we got that flag on that last one because, hey, he was going on that one. I have to give it to him. This is what's beautiful about high school sports. You know, I think it's just a great high school game. Two teams that came out and battled. And, you know, my hat's off to the kids over there. Why high? They worked really hard. And uh, but my guys, they, they really did a fantastic job. So what can you say other than the Parkside Rams showed a lot of guts last night? You're facing a crosstown rival who you've owned for years. They punch you in the mouth less than a month ago, and Parkside was not afraid in this one. They played typical ground-and-pound Parkside Ram football. You got a feel for why high, though. They thought that they had this game won in the final minute before that long score was called back. They were a holding penalty away from potentially winning this game, but sometimes... One mistake truly is the difference. Sometimes the difference between winning and losing can be erasing that one mistake that you can make throughout the game. But great game from both teams. Not surprising to see a Brendan Riley coach team come out strong like this after a big loss like they suffered last month. It'll be fun to watch these teams once again come the fall season. Well, now we move up to Federalsburg. Colonel hosting Kent County in another rematch. Colonel off to a hot start in this one. Zach Robbins dropping back with the football, and he has Elijah Palmer in his crosshairs. He's in the end zone for the game's opening score. Kent would later turn it over on downs. The Colonels kept their foot on the gas. Handoff to Cam Erickson. The junior just would not be denied. A great run there. Colonels stretching that lead out. Ensuing Trojan drive and the pressure is going to get to Thomas Goldsboro. Erickson gets back there and pokes it out. That Colonel defense comes up with the fumble recovery, and that turnover sets the offense up nicely. This Colonel gets it inside the five. Ball goes to Caden Egbert, and he gets in for one of his two touchdowns of the first half. CR rolls in the second half, 48-6. to six. They get the win over Kent County. Um, I just feel like it was a team, team effort. I mean, Everybody held a grudge last week and came out and just practiced hard all week, and they came out here and set it on the field. I mean, I, I really didn't expect to step up like they did, and they stepped up like they did. Man, the intensity they showed tonight was uh, totally different how they came out last week. I thought last week we came out flat, we played flat, and this week just the, coming out the locker room, you could see that they were focused, they were ready. The intensity was great, and they played hard. All right, Snow Hill looking for their first win. They hosted Cambridge. The Vikings striking first. Nassim Hawkins takes the pitch off the right side with blockers in front, and he goes in untouched for the touchdown. Ensuing Snow Hill drive now. Eagles drop back to pass. 
This one's picked off by Jaden Jones, and he's out running the offense all the way to pay dirt here. CSD takes the two-score lead midway through the first quarter, and they were not done by any stretch of the imagination here. Next Cambridge possession, John Henry off the play action, lets it fly to the end zone, and there's Hawkins again. Cambridge coast past Snow Hill, 53-3 the final score there. And now to our final game of the week, Bennett visiting Decatur. Viewer discretion is advised as this got ugly. Logan Bradshaw, big hit upending the ball carrier. That set the tone early. Next Decatur drive, Zamir Handy gets the jet sweep. He takes it off the right side, outrunning the defense to the pylon. Seahawks take the 22-0 lead after a quarter. A few possessions later, Ashton Snell Sire threads the needle to Handy. And he races to the end zone as Decatur puts up 60 in the first half. Who saw this coming? They rocked the Clippers last night by a final of 76 to 0. So to wrap things up, I guess we have to start with Decatur. Just wow. What a dominant performance from them. They have a lot of talent on that team. Snell Sire can absolutely rifle the ball to receivers. They are fast and they get pressure on defense. They will be a team to look out for come the fall season. And how about Colonel Richardson in a game with Kent County where both teams come in 500. The Colonels come out with an emphatic win for Coach James Jackson. Just a month ago, they gave up 35 points to Kent County. This week, the defense was much improved. So one more thing. It is interesting to watch this spring season shake out, especially since many of these teams are playing each other twice rather than once, an added wrinkle to that we are not used to. Teams getting another chance to review the tape and adjust. And we saw that with not only Parkside and Y High, but also with Colonel and Kent County. And that'll do it for our A Block. But when we return, is Bennett still the class of Salisbury Volleyball, even without Morgan Esham? We'll check in on the Clippers after the break. This is Coach McCormick from North Carolina High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.